very well limited resources. So, of course, about the food, we are very limited. And because of that, there are some impact happens in refugee camps around Thai Burma border, which is nine camps around Thai Burma border. The biggest camp has more than 40,000 refugees awaiting for the recent camp. So, instead of receiving the not enough food, besides, they are not allowed to walk outside of the camp. And they have no choice. They need food. So, it's producing more children in the camp. In addition to that, there are lack of herd, not enough doctors available in the camp. Not enough schools available for the children. After all, when they reserve, they don't have enough knowledge to survive in the third country. These are the impacts from the beginning. We do a lot of things to improve. The world never know. Since there are kids here in front of me spend their whole life, they were born in a refugee camp. They start their new life here in America. That's what I said. Global dictionary started open here in America, not in refugee camps. Then are a lot of resources. Very important, simply health issues, education issues, awareness, hygiene. These are very important things that we need to implement. And we need to educate them. This is not a goal to our country. Our country goal is to pay democracy. We don't finish our struggle if, if we cannot uh, gain democracy in Burma. There are generations to generations still suffering. I don't know how long they're going to suffer, suffer. So we really need to be aware of it. And Burma has been killed each and every day by the brutal military regime. And women has been brave. How can we overcome with this situation? How can we expect what they will be? I told you they were always busy. <laughs> How can we who are enjoy our life with our family? This is very important for the whole 16 million of people. Each and every day, they are expecting something. Here in the United States, we have safety life, good governance. We have good health assistance. And on the other hand, besides in the world, we do not have electricity aid. We do not have freedom of information. We do not have freedom of expression. When you have a chance to express yourself, you feel ease. But when we do not have a chance to express what we feel, then it's a daily life. So it's really important. The world needs peace, not the war. Very recently, Kachin State, it's northern part of Burma, has been invaded by the government. So it is very, very sad thing that more than 2,000 2, people were fled to China and there is no assistance, no food. People keep fleeing. So 
this is updated information, and I have the slider over there, so it will explain you more about it. But I think it's covered. Thank you. Yes, I'm glad that you mentioned that the, uh, there are materials over at the information table toward the entrance, and so we really encourage you to take that with you and, and read a little bit more about not only the histories of Burma and Bhutan, but also what Bajra and John's uh, yeah, community associations are currently doing here and abroad to help their fellow refugees. Carrie? Uh, I, I just wanted to add two kind of little quick editorial uh, comments. Is that one, that the, uh, the UNHCR is the, the United Nations High Commission on Refugees. Um, I know many people who work for them, and I think they're, they're, they're wonderful people, but it's a seriously flawed institution. And one of the issues is that, in terms of, both of them were speaking about food, and they have a, a standard that they follow, which is exactly down to the, the amount of calories, the amount of fiber, the amount of protein, the amount of carbohydrates that every person within the camp is allowed to receive on a daily basis. So it's this nutritional budget. And that, of course, winds up, you know, manifesting itself as the number of bags of rice that actually gets dropped off at the front door. And uh, and these are the the amount, the numbers that they've come up with are it's the, it's the equivalent of just holding someone at the threshold of malnutrition. And you can imagine what it's like for large institutions that that things just disappear through attrition, you know, constantly. So I, I know that's true of the food that they receive. So, uh, so the, the, the numbers that are their official numbers about their food allowances are just, they're, they're really appalling. And, uh, and the other, the other um, uh, issue with the United Nations is that both, both Thailand and India, neither one of them have signed the, uh, the, the, uh, the um, or ratified the, uh, the treaty, the UN treaty that pertains to refugees. So for, particularly for these two instances uh, that, uh, you know, it, 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 it puts people's, you know, future and their, their situation as exiles in, in even more a tenuous situation for, for that political reason. Well, this next question is for you, Carrie, actually. So there are thousands of Burmese fleeing the border in one direction, and here you are getting in in the opposite direction. Um, the military junta is notoriously uh, restrictive of media, and so I'm just curious how you managed to get in and how you were treated once you were in. Um, most of my work, uh, not all of it, but most of the work that I do is actually along the Thai Burma border. Uh, so I'm sure John Glenn and I have stepped in a number of the, the, the same locations. And so it's not, most of the work that I do is not actually inside Burma, it's in Thailand. <coughs> However, I was given some allowances to actually enter Karin State, which, which is a large section of land that borders the, the, the Thai-Burma border. Uh, and that is not controlled uh, by, by, the, uh, by the military regime, it's controlled by, by Karin State. Um, however, that, that's changing very quickly, because over the years they've been that the military regime has been building more infrastructure, mostly in the form of roads, into this mountainous region that they have in the past had a very difficult time, you know, uh, militarily moving into. But 20 years later, they built a lot of roads, they purchased a lot of helicopters from, from the Russians, and you're starting to see a lot more military offenses in Karin State, uh, just, just as the ones that, that, uh, that John was just describing. And so um, I was given some permission to enter uh, Korean State with some with some Korean uh, 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 security, um, but most of the work that I do is actually in Burma. Uh, excuse me, is in Thailand. The images, though, in the film that you saw that were taken inside Burma, uh, these are organizations that I've been partnering with that I've been helping to provide them with some video cameras and some solar uh, battery chargers that they can actually go inside Burma into their own communities, right? Uh, and actually do the human rights documentation. So some of the footage that you saw, that's, that's where that originated from. Thank you for that clarification. Um, so just fast forward 